Okay, here we go. A great test. Essica, go the tree. This is something we expected. So let's go. Liliana on the sleeves. Let's hope there's no Liliana in the hand because that would be a pretty damn good card against our ward creature. But we shall see. We have... Ooh, Glint Sleeve Siphoner. I do love this card. Bit of an obscure one. But it's pretty strong. Mind Spike. So they're going to discard one of our amazing cards. We've got four fantastic... This is the kind of deck I like. Every card is great. You wouldn't be sad seeing any of these cards by themselves. They all... They, every single one of these cards deals with the deals with Essica. That's brilliant. Uh, okay, so we don't actually have a... F um, oh, that's, that's actually a real shame. Okay, so we don't actually have a play on turn two, but... So the one thing about this high-tier gameplay is that you will face players with a lot of discard effects and a lot of counter spells. So, you, you know, it is... We're playing... It's, it's a, a difficult one because we're playing a, in such a high tier system that not joining them playing powerful cards does mean we're at a slight disadvantage, I suppose. Now, they haven't played anything and they haven't quit, which means they're still confident. So that, that player psychology tells you something there. I'm not going to cast Rafine because clearly they have an answer. It's pretty obvious. And we killed an Esker player and I relish in that. Relish. Okay, so today we'll be looking at Pikachu V, which is a really powerful basic Pokemon the, uh, in the electric type. It's um, You can tell Power Creep's gone a long way. It's got 200 HP, which is incredible for just a simple basic. So as you play Pikachu V, you'll realize it only has one move, but that's pretty much all it needs for two electric and one normal energy. It's got Pika Drive, which does 200 damage, which is kind of insane. It's enough to kill itself, essentially, if it was uh, facing itself. And it has, during your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. So obviously, it's quite a bit weaker than a lot of other Pokemon that can attack every turn. But obviously, dealing the 200 damage is going to be pretty intense and can knock out most things. It's got its regular, you know, weakness of... Uh, times two damage from fighting. It's got no resistance and a retreat cost of one normal. It would be nice if the retreat cost was just for free, but obviously they had to balance the card in some ways. But, you know, obviously because it's a Pikachu V, um, when it's knocked out, your opponent does take two prize cards. So you want to try and protect it as much as possible with maybe some super potions or some, some kind of good trainer cards to keep it in check. Oh, damn, I just completely forgot. This is not a Pokemon leading the deck. It's actually a Sphinx Demon. So I do apologize for that. I got a, a little bit mixed up there. So first things first, I really didn't actually want to share this deck list with, with everyone. Mostly because it's one of my favorite decks and it's pretty damn strong. It's a little bit like having a chocolate cake and you don't want to share it with anyone because it's so delicious. And you think, oh, if you give it to other people, they might copy the recipe and distribute it to other people and so on and so forth. Um... So yeah, Rafine, I didn't really expect Rafine to be one of my favorite decks, but there you have it. It's an Esper sort of aggro control build, let's say. It, this is a rework of one of my old decks I did last year. That video didn't do too well because it was I think it was a budget build, so people weren't too enamored by it. And I don't know if you knew this, but Rafine is in the upper tiers of Arena. Which means that if you do use Rafine, you will be facing Hell Q and Tier 1 decks. So just a forewarning for you. So this isn't something I normally do. I don't normally like making hyper-competitive decks. But I can justify it in a few ways. Firstly, if you use this general, you're... Well, I do anyway. You're mostly going to face powerful opponents. So it kind of justifies using powerful cards. My logic is, if I'm going to face powerful opponents anyway, you might as well go full whack. Just go full whack and just... Just take it to the max and absolutely annihilate them. I'm not going to lie to you. This deck is very powerful. It's very powerful and it's probably one of my strongest decks. Um, I think Esper or Control is probably my forte. This is where I feel the most comfortable um, being able to navigate the game. And I think Aggro Control is weird, but it probably is my favorite archetype. It's not something you hear very often. Some people might argue, argue that it doesn't actually exist, but I'm saying it does. Mainly because if you can resolve a Rafine, the game can kind of end. Something that separates this deck from a lot of other Tier 1 style decks is that it's not pure Control and it's not pure extra turns stuff there there's a couple of cards that do that stuff but we 
we're playing a more tap out control. So if you've not played the game long, tap out control means you resolve a threat and you kind of cross your fingers and hope your opponent doesn't have an answer for it. It's it, it changed me as a player years ago in Standard when I used to play White Blue Control and then I went to Grixis and Grixis is interesting because Wizards developed Grixis Control decks in a very different style. What they did was they wanted it to feel different to Azoria, so they made it a lot more, um, I guess, more aggressive. Whereas Azorius is more defensive, but this kind of blurs the lines. This is kind of somewhere in the middle. So I don't know if you've probably seen already. We've got one copy of Time Warp just because it's so powerful. We we have to kind of use at least one because every other blue deck is definitely going to use one. As for counters in itself, we have a copy of Negate, which is very controversial. Some people don't like that I use weird cards that people might not because I just don't think those kind of people are. To be honest, that experience in the game, people argue that Counterspell is better. That is 100% correct. Counterspell is a much better spell, but Counterspell is double blue. And double blue is not something you can necessarily guarantee in a deck that has all these dual lands. Just see how many dual lands there are in here. Not guaranteed. So when I play three or more color decks, I really like to have cards that are not too mana intensive on the one and two drop slot. You, you can see there's a few here. I could have gone a lot worse into the, you know, triple white, triple blue, triple black, but I just try to keep it as low as possible. So something like the gate is going to be a lot easier to cast. I'm not even necessarily happy having a D-Spark Fracture of vanishing, vanishing Verse, but these are literally the premium removal spells in the, in the game, in the colours that we have here. So unfortunately, there's not really any way of getting around these colour things here. Um, so there's one copy of Spell Pace as well because it is just so good. It basically acts as a counter spell in this format because it's such an aggressive format that counter spell and this card are pretty similar anyway. Um, so let's take a quick look at the general if you're not sure what it does. It's pretty simple. Three mana, one, four, flying, ward, one. Simple enough. Whenever you attack, target attacking creature. Knives X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. So you want to go a bit wide with this but you want to be able to benefit by having smaller creatures out and making them bigger. One prime example, which is probably one of the best cards in the deck, is an Esper Sentinel. If you get a set turn one, it's almost like you've won the game in a lot of in a lot of ways. Um, the deck has a lot of taxation effects. Uh, by the way, if you're not ready for a long deck tech, then uh, move on to the gameplay, because this is going to be a more intensive uh, deck tech essentially what i'll do from now on is if i ever go back and revisit a deck i'm going to be a lot more intensive and the deck tech will be longer so stick with it if you want to but you can obviously just go to the gameplay but if you do that don't forget to like and sub anyway back to the actual deck tech again the deck has a pseudo taxation style effect to it in that you're going to want to slow down everything your opponent does so obviously the s percentile is going to do that as well you have stuff like narset which stops them drawing two cards in one turn Ledger Shredder lets you draw additional cards whenever someone casts a second card. You've got Hushbringer to stop stuff like Atraxa. This is really important, this card. Um, it does mean that it might stop a few things in your deck. Like we've got the Futurist Spell Thief, ETB, Copy of Spell Opponents just used. However, Hushbringer is just it's so good in the meta right now. It stops so many things. It also stops Roscoe. You've got the Archivist of Ogma, which is great against high tiers because people are absolutely obsessed with fetching cards. This should be able to net you a few cards. So that's really powerful. The Sword of Forger Frontier equipped to any of your small creatures is just going to be really good because it can just give you protection. It can ramp you and draw more cards. Essentially, it just does so many things. The Redain stops your opponents from casting spells on curve. Um, another reason why Rafine's so good is because the Ward 1 is surprisingly effective. Most removal in the game is about 1, 2, 3 mana. So if you Ward 1, you're essentially saying they have to wait an extra turn to use the removal. So even if you just think of the de a delay of one turn, it doesn't sound very powerful, but just consider that most turns, most games end by turn five anyway. So if you're delaying the turn, you could literally be delaying the turn they win just because they can't kill Rafine. So don't underestimate Ward 1. One of the sweetest synergies I think in the deck that we have going is Archfiend of Ifnir, which when I saw this synergy, I was blown away. Um, whenever you cycle a skull on the card, put a counter on each creature your opponent's control. If you're attacking with three or four creatures, you're going to connive three or four times and you discard that many cards. And by doing so, Archfiend of Ifnir will annihilate your opponent's field and there's not much they can do about it because it doesn't target. So that's really powerful as well. Another powerful card I would definitely suggest putting in is the Teferi's Aegis Insight if you would draw one. Except the first one you draw each turn, you draw two. 
Seraphine basically, and this doubles the amount of draw you have, and you only discard half. So at that point, you're actually netting cards rather than replacing them, which is really powerful. Another cool thing that I uh, realized you could do the other day was Obscura Charm can actually return Rafine to the battlefield because it's a multicolor permanent with CMT 3 or less. <clears throat> now it can't block because it comes in tapped, but keep this card in mind because I genuinely think this card is going to go up in people's estimations. Bringing back any permanent that's a multicolor card with 3 or less is incredible. As the format gets, you know, gets older, this card will just get better and better. This works with Kaito Shizuki. It works with Campbell. It works with Obscura Polymorphous, which exiles a creature and they get to see something. So yeah, definitely, definitely Obscura Charm's really good. The deck doesn't, as I said, doesn't have too many counters, but I really don't think it, it goes against it that much. It's just really good. You can control the rest of their hand with Duresses. The Thought Seas is there as well. Um, I'm darting around a lot, so I do apologise, but you've got Hopeless, Hopeful Initiate, whenever you put counters on this, you can take them away to destroy things as well. Obviously, this works with the Connive. That's where the one-drop range is so big. It's just a pretty aggressive deck. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this extensive deck tech looking at an old deck I did last year. If you want to see me doing more revisions of old decks, please tell me in the comments below. Tell me what you'd like to see um and yeah don't forget if you do join the channel as a member um for a fee uh, it's three three pounds three dollars a month i can make any commander you want every single month as long as you're a part of that membership scheme so that might be handy if you need help uh making a deck i can essentially you know do some research i've trialed and errored this deck for a long time this is probably one of my longest lasting competitive decks now even probably more this is probably more favorite to me than the uh, nickel Burles deck which sounds a bit crazy but you know given how time makes things a lot stronger this is probably stronger than Burles the ravager and it's sad but i think i'll do another video about that about how power creep makes you reevaluate cards that, tell me if that would also be an interesting topic so if power creep invalidates old cards essentially and how we think about card design so as I said, the deck list will be below. Don't forget to leave me a like and a sub if you enjoy this uh, this concept and enjoy the gameplay that will fold, unfold before you. Okay, so we get to go first, but... Hmm. Okay, the hand's not too bad. As you can see, this aesthetic is the April 1st um, overlay they've put into the game. Obviously, it's a 80s-style VHS thing with the, you know, the school background there. And we could just go for two creatures. This is actually a pretty damn good start. Because it means next turn we're going to be able to connive a few times. So at this point it's just board wipes that are going to screw us over. But yeah, that's that's mainly the reason I put in the Bane Hound. Just the lifelink haste. It's pretty good when you start putting counters on it with the Rafine. So as I was saying in the deck tech, if they have a two mana kill spell... And we play Rafine, they just won't be able to use it on the turn that we get it out. And also we've got the selfless savior here as well. Virus Beetle, so they make us discard a card. I think we'll get rid of that. We'll try and keep the Banishing Burst to deal with the Turgrid. So annoyingly, we um we've got a blocker now, but so I just think we'll take with one for now. This is a bit cautious of me, but I just I don't want to lose the self of savior to a stupid virus beetle. So right. So as I said, pretty awesome field. If they try and kill Rafine in any way, we can sack the dog to save Rafine. Man, I have to say this this board this background is quite distracting. There's a lot of stuff. So they're going to discard another card in the hand. They're probably going to go for the Painful Bond here because that lets us draw cards. Oh no, only, it only has to be a card with um, CMC 3 or greater. Okay, well, we're in a fantastic position then, aren't we? Oh, and a sword as well. Fantastic. See, now we can put it on the Selfless Saviour. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's probably get rid of the Fatal Push because the General is going to be too big anyway. 
maybe we get rid of the... Mm, we've got so many good cards here. Grasp. And that land. So many good things to discard. It, it always makes me sad, but that's the nature of the deck. Filtering to the answers. That's what we need. And I discarded the Sotawara because I'd, I'd rather have the dual land. The flexibility of two colours is more important to me. Plague Crafter. So we're going to lose... Each lose a creature. Um, I think we'll get rid of the Banehound. Okay. And yeah, we'll just draw, draw a couple of cards here. Not that bothered about the Plague Crafter. We can probably discard a card to make the Saviour bigger. Oh wow, Combat Research. Fantastic. Okay, so we have the Vanishing Verse, so maybe we just, we'll just get rid of this here. Or try anyway. So yeah, so our deck has a lot of different angles to hit. That's why I always prefer uh, multicolor decks. Multicolor just gives you the excitement of just, it just has so many different things you can do. Monocolor and two color are great, but... I think the problem with monocolor and two-color for me personally is that there's not enough complexity. And I like the complexity. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just mad. Like, I get people like things that are easy. Um, let's do this. No, we don't want to show our hand yet. Let's put the combat research under the feed. So if you've not seen combat research, it's so, it's so good. I absolutely love this card. So whenever the creature deals damage, you basically draw a card. Pretty simple, but if it's legendary, it's plus one, plus one, and ward one. I just love that. I just love it. It's so cool. So let's target the Rafine. Just go. And that's why we didn't play the land yet, you see. Okay. So I think we're... So we're going to draw another card here. If Rafine hits, which is incredibly likely. Down to 14. Another land. Yeah, we'll play the land. We want to establish the land as much as possible. Yeah, we've got a pretty damn good field. We can discard something next turn to get something back. Who knows what it could be. It could be the Hushbringer. So now Languish doesn't do anything to us. Um, Extinction Event does. So they're going to make us discard a card. Which I will gladly do. Let's get rid of the land. This is the thing about Turgrid players. I've, I've said this a lot of times in old videos. But there's two types of Turgrid players. There's ones that don't realise that you need Turgrid out for the deck to actually operate. And there's ones that play other things to defend long enough to get Turgrid out. And then start discarding. Because currently they're not actually getting any, um, any value from any of their discards. So we get, let's get the Bane Hound out. Let's be really, really, really aggressive here. Although it comes in tapped. But next turn, hopefully. So the Saviour is going to bite the bullet one day. That's inevitable. So there's no point making them any bigger. Oh, wow. Okay. Hushbring are probably not so good. Legion. Legion is good, but... We have the Vanishing Verse, and then we're gonna. So yeah, as you can see, our deck is just filled with sheer power, and I've never felt so safe. For like this, this deck makes me feel safe. It's like a comfort blanket. Oh my goodness, and a Teferi's Hatred Insight as well. Let's go for the Planeswalker. Let's diversify threats here. Black struggles dealing with multiple different styles of threats, so they don't have anything like a River's Rebuke currently, and they're at seven. So if they have a board wipe, um, um, yeah, I don't want to risk that. So let's just draw a card here. And then next turn, if we do get to keep the Aegis Insight, then it's going to be crazy. We already, you know, we have lethal on board already. So there's no point playing any more things, to be honest. Discard a card. Yeah, we'll discard another card here. So the... When this flips, this is going to get crazy because it gets plus X plus O for each creature in Defending Player's Graveyard. So we've got one, two, 
three. Okay, it's not too bad. They're going to use duress. So they're most likely going to get rid of the, the insight here. Okay, this is worrying me because if they do have an extinction event, that is our entire field. Okay, thank goodness for that then. Yeah, it's, it's strange. They're just doing random discard without any synergy. There's Yeah, it just kind of felt a bit loose. Especially for this high tier. I, I expected a bit more, to be honest, but there you go. We got pretty lucky, I guess. Okay, opponent has Teferi here of Dominaria. So that's pretty powerful, I have to say. I'm going to mulligan this because we need mana. Okay, this, this is mana, but... I don't really like my odds against Teferi. He is... Oh, wow. And all the spells have flash. Fantastic. Fan bloody tastic. Yeah, that's possibly one of the best cards Control Blade could get out. We do have the Brazen Borrower, though, so it's tempting to bounce, try and bounce this in their turn. And then make them recast it, because obviously it's four mana for free, but... No counters. It's weird. Do they have counters? What's going on? That's... Okay. How strange. I am... I am somewhat confused. Alright, let's just swing in with the one guy. Sarah Paragon. Okay. She's going to be really good for recouping our things, huh? Right, let's get more lands out. I'm a bit confused. So they're going to have the Teferi next turn, potentially, right? That's the logic. Um, oh, damn, I can't actually... Uh, snapped two white sources for that. Okay. So, all right, let's just... Yeah, th this turn was shambolic. Why did the auto-tapper do the, the white sort? Weird. So they're just passing... Okay, I guess we'll just discard this Sentinel into play. That's pretty good. Surely they have something, don't they? Unless this is a, a, a strange Teferi budget brew or something. Hmm. Well, I guess we can take a look, right? Get to draw a card. What's going on in the hand, then? What have we got going on here? Didn't say please. So they are running counters. And they're going to make a smell three. Oh, wow. Okay. Fair enough. Let's go for the sword. And just see what happens. So they they need a board wipe, really. Because if they use Teferi, they... Uh, man, that was a very strange game. Very strange. Okay, we can press against Uro. Got a pretty decent stack hand. Um, these all come in tapped somewhat annoyingly. Okay, fine. So we'll get to Thoughtseize next turn. So Uro, Simic, Graveyard style deck. Spell Pierce as well. So if we have those two up, we're going to get to Spell Pierce if we need to in the following turn. Oh, would you believe it? Uh, wow. Okay. I guess we get rid of make disappear. <laughs> this is not going to be good. So many counters. So that's counters a creature spell. It's past turn. So we get to draw a couple cards here. Be useful. So good thing I didn't get rid of. I uh, got rid of the right one because I should be able to resolve resolve this. Okay, day of judgment probably not so useful there. I guess this would be a good time to try and get out some ramp. Hmm, they're tempted to use the... Oh, they got a negate. 
Okay. Fine. They obviously they wanted to cut down our mana production. It makes sense. It does it does make sense. Especially in you know in the in the deck tech I said in each turn counts greatly because if you only get five or six of them normally. So Uro's gonna be able to So I could exile it here, but they will get a replacement. And they still have the mana for the counter spell, but we do have the counter counter spell. So let's see if we can get lucky with this spell piss. And that's why knowledge is power, my friends. So resolving the Rafine is good. Uh, being blue and green, I'm not really sure how many answers they may have on the field. So <laughs> as if there's three counters there. They have left Uru in the bin, which is the correct thing to do with the Titans. Tome of the Infinite. That is something that I I do want to get rid of. They do have the Lazatep plating, though. So let's try and make them use that. Because then it means the Elswith Conquer's Death will be able to go off. Okay, that's good. Yeah, and also they didn't they can't activate it even once. Duress, right, let's swing in. Time warp. <laughs> right. Uh, do we want a time warp here, though? I feel like it's a bit early. I think we just go for the ECD for now. On that. Okay, pretty sweet. We we don't have any creatures, so maybe the Day of Judgment would have been good, actually. But, yeah, maybe that would have been good, because then we could have gotten rid of the Uro as well, which they're about to get out. Now, the, the the stage two of this is going to be... Oh, no, they're going to search for a spell. But we do have a duress. Discover the formula. Okay, so our duress is going to act, literally save the day here. And a land as well. So we could do two things. Um, Let me think about this for a sec. So we definitely want to duress the discover the formula. That's... That's for sure. They have a Displacer Kitten, which is interesting because if they flicker the Uru, it will die. Alright, before we use Time Warp, I think we just attack first. Oh man, I'd love to put a creature in the bin here. No creature. Okay. I guess we will just... Um, I guess we'll Time Warp. It doesn't feel fantastic, given that we don't have anything to revive with the ECD. Come on now, let's give us something usable. Leyline, I guess Leyline's better than no Leyline. And we'll exile the Uro here. So it makes it a bit trickier for them. Fantastic, so the Dismiss is something that we're going to have to deal with, sadly. But, um, well, not if they don't have the mana for it, I suppose. Land... I mean, we do have the Castle Lock Thwain. Negate. Okay, I think, you know what? See you later, Leyline. Too slow. Too slow, bro. And now we have a bit of a clock with the Rafine. Okay, you know what? We can do this. We've got the Castle on the Negate. Really damn spicy. They could go for the Uro once again. But if they do, it's going to be a, quite a bit tricky to get them out the second time around. Okay, so that's going to resolve. They're going to get to draw a card. Gain three. Man, that's keeping them in the game. So the game, this is the ninth life they've gained from that now. Yeah, once from the cast, once from the bin, second cast. Okay, let's draw a card here. Let's just see if there's any kind of interaction or... Of course, why not? Another land. Consuming Tide, not, not necessarily what I needed to see here. Oh, okay. Obscura Polymorphous is pretty damn good. Especially when they don't actually have... Well, they have the Dismiss. But we do have a Negate. So we can negate their... Count Spell if they play one. They don't have Dovin's Veto. That's not in their colours. Getting rid of the Kitten? Probably legit. Especially if they're a Flicker-style build. And we even have enough to use the Castle Lock Thwain.
This is a tricky one. Hydroid crisis. That's not good, is it? And it's pretty... They left one mana open there, which is a bit uh, interesting to see there. Let's draw a card. We take two, get to 12. Infernal Grasp. Now, that is a card that does the thing. They do have one blue, though, so... Okay. We are... We are risking it here. Let's put the counter on this guy. Let's split it up a little bit. Discarding some things. You know, those two. So we're going to probably go for the morale. They're blocking. What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know. A bit scared now. Oh. Oh, okay. So that's graveyard filler. It's like a stocking filler, but anything that puts stuff in the graveyard for the Uro to get cheaper. It's good for them. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mm. Mass manipulation would be terribly bad. Wouldn't it now? So are they going to pay the one? They pay the one. Okay, let's see if we can negate this. Oh, as if I called and negated it as well. Suck these nuts. Witness protection. Love it. They were so confident, weren't they? All right. Let's go in for the smackaroonies. I guess we can make the legitimate business person stronger. No reason why not. Ooh. Discard three cards. That's sad, isn't it? That is sad. Uh, I think it's going to be these three. Oh, but is it though? Oh, no, this is really horrible. Okay, Redain we can live without. The Larsenist. I think we're just going to have to be careful, aren't we? Let's keep the Larsenist. Yeah, the Larsenist might reveal something like a rebuke or something. Come on then, what's in your goddamn hand? Nothing exciting. Exile it. I guess we can exile that because I don't get to use that then. Right. We be, we have sort of lethal. Sort of. That mass manip was lucky. If that had resolved, we would have been instantly dead. The interesting thing here is that they have a they have like counters and stuff, but we don't have any spells. And you need spells for counters to be effective, so... Playing a land, that's right, reveal your hand. Strict Proctor, oh, that... Oh, wow, okay, and the Doom Foretold. Now, the issue here is we're not going to be able to resolve anything. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so they can counter... They can counter two spells, so we, we're going to have to just swing in. I think. Right, let's see. What do we got? Well, we might as well make the um, the business person bigger, I suppose. Okay. We'll get rid of the... <laughs> yeah, we get rid of this because if we don't, that means that Ura just comes into play. Get rid of that. We're not going to resolve anything, to be perfectly honest. One, two... Three. What? So we might as well just actually. No, we'll get rid of the the spark because then this will be big enough to go through the euro, which means they might want to block. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So now they have to block the legit legitimate business person because otherwise they will die. Wow, I, I'm actually really lucky. I think the Larsenist... I think the Larsenist pretty much secured our victory. It's going to sound weird, but this... Um, the Chemist is inside. I would have drawn them four cards. Here comes Uro again. They're going to go up to six, but they're going to need something freaking awesome. 
draw, gain three. So they can still block this, but they're going to take a hell of a lot in the air. Oh, they can't. Yeah, that wasn't even a... Yeah, I think they're just dead. Okay, we get another creature. Oh, yes. That felt fantastic to beat a control deck like that. Amazing. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead. You know you want to.